<clears throat> good morning, good morning. I think we just started. I think we're good. One second, everyone. People are joining here. All right. I think I'm pointing the wrong direction. There you go. It's one. And that's two. All right. Good morning, everyone. Hope you had a great week. Beautiful summer is here. I don't know if whoever is here in Los Angeles or in California or in places where it's summer. We're enjoying a beautiful summer now. Uh, we went to take a ride on a bike this morning. It was beautiful. It's getting very hot. Beautiful to go in the ocean, to go and jump in the ocean. It's perfect now. No excuses. Uh, for those that uh, have been doing this or they at least watch one or two of these episodes, you know that we always start while well, we give time to people to join and start you know, uh, connecting to this uh, little minute of 30, 30 seconds of silence for whoever right now is going through a hard time for everything that has happened. And I don't want to get into specifics already. We know what we're dealing with and everything. And uh, I want to start focusing and moving on and, and, uh, and, and that. So let's take a little minute of silence. I'm going to just one second. Okay. All right. So let's hope that, you know, we can send and share light to this world. I think things are. Uh, somehow it's starting to turn around, or at least feels like it, uh, feels a lot better. Uh, people are starting to go out, starting to open up their businesses. Uh, you know, changes are happening for good, I think. Uh, and uh, we, you know, the premise and, and why, we, why, why I started to do this, uh, this webinar really, again, is to share experiences and share my opinions and share my point of view on on everything and mainly, mainly, mainly to focus on the one thing, the one thing only that we have control over it, which is our mind, the way how we feel, the way what we, what we want to feel. Um, you know, so we're going to be talking today about mindset and how important mindset is. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the power of the mind, the power of your thoughts and how your thoughts create your reality and, uh, and the discipline and all that that we cover in many other chapters before. So... Let's, let's just do a little checkup, you know, we check sometimes on, on how is our, our work on all this stuff being so far. And I always ask this question from one to 10, uh, 10 being, you know, I've been doing everything right. I've been meditating, I've been using my journal, I've been writing down, I've been visualizing, I've been exercising, I've been doing everything that we discuss, that there are tools that help you get to a great state of mind. Uh, just put a qualification for yourself uh, from one to ten. Where do you see yourself? Uh, is it a one, meaning I'm doing almost nothing, or is it a five that I do some of the stuff but I'm still working on other things, or is it a eight, you know, or nine? Uh, that's okay. Uh, you know, just just write down just for you to keep track. You know, it's important to keep track of where you are. So. You know, uh, this is a constant reminder, you know, it's not something that you're going to do once and everything works. It's, it's, it doesn't work like that. This is like, this is about the journey. We're going to talk about this. It's about the lifestyle. It's about habituating yourself to this lifestyle, you know, because our mind tends to think, think 
whatever the mind wants to think, you know, it gets bombarded by the situations, by the news, by what's happening out in the world, what, what somebody called you, a client called you, or, or whatever it is, that's the reality that you start getting bombarded by different things and you get, uh, your mind starts going, you know, and you can stop it. So the, the goal with this is to try to control that and to try to at least the majority of the time to put thoughts in your brain that you want to be thinking, you know, you want to start creating that reality from now in the future. So you need to start being a visionary, you know, you need to start visualizing and, and, and seeing where you want to be. If you don't see it with your mind, you're not going to have it. First, it needs to be here in order to be there. So I think that mindset is one of the most important things. I love all the talks, all the books, all the topics, everything about mindset. It just gets me super excited we're going to talk about today about mindset you know i mean mindset is a psychological trait right um and there is uh two kinds of mindset in my opinion uh there is the fixed mindset and there is the growth mindset you want to be on the second one not on the first one so the fixed minds what is what is what is all successful people have in common I think all successful people uh, have a growth mindset, you know? The fixed mindset is the mindset when people are born and people, you know, think that this kind of mi mindset they believe is, is, is innate, you know? You were born like that, you know? You were born with that ability, you were born, and yeah, that's correct, you know? Some people are born with the ability to play soccer better than other ones. Some people are born with a better voice uh, and so on and forth. But, but to be successful, you can be successful in a number of different things. You don't, you don't need to be successful in the one thing that for some reason in your, in your abilities is not something that you were born with that ability, but something that you can learn and something that you can develop. So people with fixed mindsets are the ones that said, oh, that's who I am. This is how, what I was born with. These are my gifts. This is what I know what to do. And it's more like a constant thing, right? Uh, it's about, they think about, about the result also, you know, there, there are people that are thinking, okay, this is what I want. And they're just focused on the result so much that they don't really enjoy the process and they don't see what the process is about. While people with the growth mentality, I mean, I'm talking about successful athletes, successful entrepreneurs, successful people in any trade or any kind of work they do, it's about the journey. You know? It's about that journey that's gonna get you to the result. So yes, it's okay and it's super important and we talk about goals in here and how important in my life goals have been. You set a goal, you, you set long-term goals where you wanna be, uh, you set mid-time goals and then you set the closer goals, you know. So eventually you have weekly, monthly, uh, by, you know, monthly or however you want to spread them or however you want to have the, the, the distance between your goals. What I do is, you know, I have my monthly goals, my every trimester goals, and then eventually my yearly goals. And then I have a five-year goal and a 10-year goal. So what the goals do give you direction. They give you a direction where you want to be and where in what direction you go. Sometimes life will take you on a different path. Doesn't mean that if you had a goal set up to be something or wanting to be in a place, you're not going to get it. You will get it. It's proven that, you know, anything that you put your head on and anything that you visualize and you see yourself having it and you emotionalize it, well, like we discussed in here before many times, you will eventually get it. Now, in the exact same way how it's gonna happen or no, we don't know. We don't know what path we're gonna take, maybe a little a little left, a little bit to the right, but eventually we'll be, we'll be getting there. And the, and the joy and the and important thing is this on enjoying the process, you know, enjoying the process of getting there, you know. Don't forget to every day just enjoy what you had to do to get there, you know, and, and oftentimes it's kind of hard because you're just, working and working and you don't see the result happening right away and you start getting frustrated or by the way in order to succeed in anything you're going to fail a lot so you know the fact that you have a goal and the fact that you know what you want and the fact that you meditate and you visualize and you do all these things doesn't necessarily mean that all it's all going to go in a smooth ride you're going to fail a lot i mean you have to i mean people see successful people being rewarded for what they're good at you know uh, i'm in the middle of watching the the last dance which is a TV show, you know, with Michael Jordan and the basketball players, which is amazing. Uh, people, people see those guys and they're like, oh my God, how incredible they are. Any athlete or any successful person, like people just see the tip of the iceberg. They see like, what an amazing success. And they see successful people being rewarded. But what they don't see is all the 
incredible amount of extensive hours of hard work that they have to get done to be able to get that reward. So let's don't forget about that. How many people, and we talk about this many times, but I think it's important to repeat it and repeat it because you have to fail a lot. If you're not failing enough, then you're not going to be successful. You know, you need to try and you need to get out of your, your comfort zone and you need to try new things and you need to, you know, it's, it's, it's not the ability to just get there. It's, it's the ability to fail and get up again, shake it up and continue going and shake it up and continue going and continue going to at a point in time, I think I saw you something like where, you know, the universe, God sees someone uh, failing and getting up and doing it again. And I want that. And I know I want it so bad. And I visualize and I get up and I, nothing works. And But I'm, I'm continuing to go for it. And finally, the universe says, oh, my God, let's just give it to him because this guy is never going to give up. Or this, this girl is never going to give up. So that's kind of like in a, in, a, in a funny way, I, I, the way how I like to see it. It's like when you set your mind on something, and it's like, I'm going to do that. Nothing really matters. Circumstances economy, none of that matters. I mean, I'll give you as, a, as an example. I mean, I, again, I only give you myself as an example. You have to uh, have the ability to, you know, really, really have that passion come out of from the inside and, 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 and know and have the certainty that you're going to do it. Um, and the universe will just open up for you. I mean, when you have... But not make the mind of like, yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to work. No, it's got to be passion. There's got to be emotions. And it's got to be like you made your mind that you're going to do that. You will send that energy. You know, we all energy beings. You'll send that energy out there. And the universe is going to want to correspond to that. It's going to, again, present right opportunities, meet the right people. Everything is going to set in there for you to start looking and realizing, oh my God, this is, this is really happening, you know? Uh, and when things start happening, you know, it's a confirmation that isn't there. Uh, I give you myself as an example right now. I started this year in January, as you all know, the economy was incredible. Uh, in Los Angeles, the real estate was on fire. Uh, the biggest sell in history started, you know, closed in, in the last quarter of last year and the beginning of this year. And out of the sudden, the, the COVID happened and, and, and everything that we dealt with, right? But you know what? I, we've been going through this and I've been practicing this and they have been weeks that have been really rough. Uh, sorry, it's a helicopter passing over here. I'm going to drink my coffee. So... Again, so they're weeks that they're tough, but you just get stick to it, you know? And uh, I got to tell you, you know, in the last couple of weeks, and I'm not telling you this as to show off or anything, I'm, I have been as busy as I was last year. I've been as busy as I was in the beginning of the year. Uh, there are limitations and there are things that we're dealing with with people. Maybe some of them are not comfortable coming in their house yet. Some are not, but the people that are out there, they need to buy a house, they want to buy a house or the people that want to do business, they're out there, they're working, and they're like, I'm, I'm going to continue to go no matter what, you know? Yes, you need to take your precautions and everything, and everybody has different beliefs and everything, so I respect everybody, but to your comfort zone of what you can do, I still, I, I, I thought I was going to have the best year of my, of my life, on my career this year. Uh, when COVID happened for a second, I'm not going to lie to you, I doubt it, and I was like, hmm, maybe not this year, but I'm starting to believe that that can still possible, that can still happen. I know that is a possibility that I'm going to have the best year of my life. I'm working for it now. I'm, I'm super fired up. Uh, you know, things are starting to unfold in a beautiful way. So if that's happening to me, it, it, it can happen to anyone out there. So just don't let, again, I hope that you're not inundated by the news. I hope you're taking time to exercise i'm hoping you're doing the visualization i'm hoping the whole thing of doing this conversation that we're having right now is to to you know keep keep each other in track you know me coming here i'm meeting you guys every every wednesday helps me keep in track myself if i come i'm i'm, I'm talking about all this stuff and i'm not doing it you know I, I will be a hypocrite you know i wouldn't feel good about myself but in order for me to show up here on Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning and talk about stuff, I need to be doing it and it needs to be working, right? So again, I habituated my life. 
becomes a lot easier for me. Yes, I have ups and downs. And when I'm down, I have the ability to bounce back fast using the tools that I'm trying to share with you guys. And that they're tools that I didn't invent, by the way. These are tools that teachers have put out there. Their books, their seminars, their, everything is out there. So uh, let's, let's talk a little bit more about the growth mindset, you know. Uh, people, they have a grown mindset. They are the opposite of people. They're fixed mindset. Fixed mindset is like, oh, I was born like this. I'm either good at something or I'm not. And that's how it's going to be. Uh, people with grow mindset believe in learning. They believe like, okay, I don't know how to do that, but I'm going to learn how to do that. And I'm going to use the tools that are out there in the world to learn how to do that. You know, uh, it's been proven by, uh, by neuroscience that we never stop learning until the moment we die. We never stop learning. Our brain is always learning. I mean, we love learning. I mean, we thrive, we grow, we, our, our body, when we are learning, gets reinvigorated. Our, every cell of our body, when you're learning something new, is alive, you know? So until the day you die, you're learning. So why stop learning? Not because you got out of college means that you need to stop learning. Keep learning. Keep reading new books. Keep talking to new people. Surround yourself by, by mentors, by people you do, that you admire, by people that are on top of of their careers by people there on the top of the of the food chain on what you do pick their brains some might not want to talk to you but there's going to be a lot of them they're going to be happy to talk to you you know they're going to be happy to share with you i have so many mentors and i like uh you know i'm, I'm a very persistent guy you know i talk to them and i ask them questions and i i ask for meetings i ask for for a, for a dinner for lunch for coffee for something because i'm always constantly trying to learn it's like hey when you started what you do uh when you were uh at this stage of your career, can you tips? I mean, last night I was watching, uh, I think it's episode four or five uh, of, the, of The Last Dance uh, when, you know, Michael Jordan and, uh, and Kobe Bryant got to play in the All-Stars. And it talks about how, you know, everybody around them and the circumstances, they were trying to make him rivals, you know? It's like, oh, here's the king, Michael Jordan, and there's this new kid, Kobe Bryant, that profiles to be the next Michael Jordan and everybody's like what would happen if they play one-on-one -on -one? why do you guys don't play one-on-one -on -one? you should go and play one-on-one -on -one and see what happens so all this is going around and if you hear the, 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 the mindset of these guys are like they're not even worried about that they're just they're, they're doing what they're doing as, as a matter of fact the opposite you know Kobe approached in, in the middle of the game to Michael and got close to him and asked him a specific question of what to do in a situation like this and Michael admired that. And Michael turned around and said, gave him a very detailed answer of, this is what you should do on my experience and this. And by the way, here's my number. You can call me anytime. I'll be more than happy to, to give you tips. So there was no ego at the moment of Kobe being like, I don't want to ask this guy who is the best because I'm, I'm great too. And on the other hand, it's like Michael was like, I don't care giving this guy tips. He's great. He wants to learn. I'm going to share with him. If I, if, I, if I know stuff that I learned through the years, I'm going to save this guy some time, you know, and that's the whole thing is like us surrounding by successful people, us surrounding by people that know more is to save us time. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, you should listen to your parents when you're a kid or when you're young or even when you're old. I mean, I still listen to my parents because they live longer. They're wiser. They have more experience. You know, you always need to listen and, and, and you know, it's like it's like the you know sometimes kids they don't wanna they don't wanna listen to the parents and uh, you know don't touch that you're gonna burn you don't touch it, you're gonna burn and some kids like to just touch it to learn on their own which is nothing wrong with it by the way but there are kids that listen and they're like okay I won't do that uh, you know uh, learn from from people that are wiser they have more experience than you okay so that's that's when regards of of of, uh, of the growing mindset you know you can grow your mindset you can you can learn how to prepare yourself better. You can learn from books. You can learn from classes. You can learn from courses and all that kind of stuff. Uh, how do you develop uh, uh, a growth mindset? You know, uh, journals are great tools. We talk about this, you know, uh, write down, write down the things you want to do, write down the tasks, the activities that you're doing, you know, it's like, okay, I'm going to grow my mindset on this specific thing. I'm going to write down what are the things I need to do to feel that way? What are the tasks I'm going to do a day? I'm going to wake up. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to visualize. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to go on a run. I'm going to do incantations. I'm going to do repetitions. You know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to bombard my brain with, with what I want, with my goals. I'm going to repeat it to myself. I'm going to say it out loud. I'm going to hear my say, myself saying it. All this has a meaning. And then what you need to do is you need to go every day 
and do like a spreadsheet, you know, put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, months, or whatever, and then go in there and go visualizing. Uh, today's Monday, I didn't get a chance to do it in the morning, hopefully I'll do it tonight, or yesterday I didn't do it. On Wednesday, I did it. On Friday, I did it. Thursday, I couldn't. Uh, meditation, yes, yes, no, no, no. And I start kind of keeping track of everything because that's how you develop mindset. Because then you're going to go in a month and you're going to look at your, at your, at your journal, at your, at your spreadsheet, and do it anywhere. You can write it down. You can create it in your, in your, in your, in your iPhone, in your calendar, in your Outlook, whatever. How you do it and the tools and where you're going to do it is not important. Important is you keep track and you check yourself. So at the end of the month, you go and say, okay, hmm. Why is it that I couldn't visualize so many days? Oh, because I woke up too late and uh, I didn't have time to do it. Or I was watching TV and then by the time I realized it was like late and I just went straight to bed. So maybe I should stop watching TV before I go to bed, which is actually a fantastic idea because before you go to bed, as I told you, the brain is ready to you know, go and connect with the universe. Your subconscious mind is going to wake up and it's going to grab the last few things or the most the things that cause more impression on you in the day and it's going to blast it out there, you know? So instead of watching TV and I'm, I do this sometimes, you know, I'm just get caught up in a TV show or something and then I go on and, and, and I'm really tired to meditate and it's not the same or visualize. So you start keeping track. Okay. So maybe I need to stop watching TV before I go to bed. Then I'm going to add more of my visualizations. Why I didn't do this or what I didn't do this exercise because of this. So then you start adjusting yourself and then you start getting better and better and better. Your mindset's going to get a lot better and you're going to feel a lot better yourself. And I'm telling you, the results are going to be phenomenal. I mean, you can track your results and then you're going to go one day and look at one year and you're going to see, oh my God, I can't believe I've improved so much. And by doing that and by looking at your and tracking your own work, okay, no one is going to, it's great to have accountability. And as you know, I introduced you through one of my, uh, I think episode five or six or whatever to Steve Scholl is my coach, which is good to have someone as, as a, that you can be accountable to. Uh, you can do it with a friend, you can do it with a coworker, but the reality is that you need to be accountable to yourself. You need to have the ability to look at yourself in the mirror and say, today I did everything I could have done. I had a fantastic day. I feel a hundred percent. And that feeling when you go to bed, I'm telling you that feeling good that you achieve and that is going to get you to a lot, a lot, faster to the results and to the goals you want, okay? So we talk about find mentors, ask questions, okay? Uh, I'm looking at my notes here. I'm make sure I don't skip anything. Read books, audio books, read them. Uh, create a book club. If you know a few people that, that is doing this uh, right now that they're looking at these webinars, give them a call and say, hey, how about let's do, you know, let's do a, find a partner. Let's be accountable. Let's talk once a day every other day, twice a week or whatever you're comfortable with and you have the time for and check with the partners like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing? How you do today? Do you do your visualization? No, man, I couldn't. I was busy and this and that. Well, why don't you try this? Cool. Have you done that? And just for the reason, just having to call someone and having to be honest, though, right? Uh, to, to be accountable to someone is going to help you keep in track and apply the knowledge that you, that you read in those books. Apply the knowledge of what you're watching in TV or, or the TV shows or, or the mentor's uh, uh, advice. All that you need to apply it. It's not enough just to get it and go and sit there and listen. You need to, you need to apply it. You know, time is the most valuable thing we have. So if you're going to sit with a mentor and ask a few questions, you better be ready to take notes and then go and apply those, those, those messages, okay? Learn and keep learning and keep learning. You got to continue to learn. One of the ways how you learn the most is by failing. Just do it, you know. Uh, Gretzky, what, uh, what did Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I mean, how freaking genius is that? You fail 100% of the shots you don't take. Just shoot, shoot, do it, try, try over and over again, get up. You know, uh, that's, that's one of the main, main things of successful people too, is just they don't know, they're not afraid of failing. They're not afraid of trying again, to starting again from scratch and just do it again and again and again. You need to decide what you want and make everything that is in your hands and everything that is possible about that. I want that, I'm gonna breed that, I'm gonna feel that, I'm gonna think about it, I'm gonna meditate about it, I'm gonna read books about it. If I wanna be an expert on something, I'm just gonna 
you know, soak my brain, myself, my everything about that one thing that I want. And you need to constantly remind yourself, you need to do it. You need to do it. And life's going to show up. Situations are going to have circumstances. Someone gets sick. Someone in your family is going to have a problem uh, at work. Something's going to happen. COVID, economy, uh, whatever is happening around you is going to happen. But you have to have the ability to somehow you will get distracted and go back and center, go back and using these tools. You know, uh, clarity is power. Tony Robbins said that, you know, you need to have a clear image of what you want, where you want to be, who you want to be, how you want to feel. The clear, the more clear you are, the more power in there is. Clarity is power. And I said this before, clear messages to the universe. You know, I often, people that know me or they work with me, they oftentimes hear me correct them. You know, uh, I'm talking with someone and someone says like, if I sell this house, I'm going to, you know, get closer to my goal. And I go, wait, what do you say? If I sell this, no, no, no. When I sell this, little things like that, believe it or not, they have a very powerful meaning into your brain, into your subconscious. If I sell, it's doubtful. If, maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. When I sell is happening. You made up your mind. You're going to do it. It's going to happen. Okay. So constantly catch yourself making those little changes. Constantly think about that everything that's coming out of your mouth, even though you don't think it's important, is going to come out of your mouth. You're going to hear it and it's going somewhere. Whether you realize or not, it is. Trust me. Believe me. This is proven. I mean, I, I, I'm not making it up. This is, this is the stuff that is proven. Okay. And then things will stop to pop, you know, like questions and, and this and that go back to center. Don't get distracted. Okay. To have an extraordinary life, you have to have an extraordinary psychology. Tony Robbins, again, my favorite. Think about that for a second. If you have extraordinary psychology, what does that mean? That means you have a mindset. That means that you are focus that means that you know what you want that means that you have clarity and that if you combine that with 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 that strong state of mind right and how you get a strong state of mind you, you involve your physiology you know like you see that i every time I, before i come and do this and i do some sort of exercise i go run on the beach and jump in the ocean today i took my bike uh eh, another day i'll go to whatever so you need to engage your body to get all your juices and blood and cells and energy, everything moving. And then once you are in a place like that, full of energy, then you can start doing things. Then you can go and meet those clients. Then you can go and make those phone calls. Then you can come and talk like I'm talking to you. Because if I was to come here and be like, hey guys, um, we're going to talk about uh, mindset today. Uh, mindset is, I mean, it will be so boring, I think, you know, but uh, I'm, I, as you hear me, I'm passionate about it. You know, for number one, I'm Latino, so I'm very passionate when I talk, but uh, I, I'm full of energy right now. I just went and had an amazing bike ride. I came back, I had breakfast, I connected with you. Makes me happy to see participants in here. They want to hear this. Makes me happy to see people. They want to, you know, pay attention to what I'm saying. At least, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sharing some information and to see people, they want to at least listen. That, that's showing already that, okay, I'm, re- I'm going to go and connect to this guy. And I want to see what he says. And if one thing out of the 50 things that he says in, in this hour makes sense, well, guess what? You, you know one more thing now, right? So let's talk about something that we touched base before, but I think it just goes really, really connected with what we're talking about. You know, there is the uh, reticular activated system, right? RAS is basically uh, a part in your brain that determines... Um, it determines what you notice and what you don't. Okay. So if you uh, are thinking about your, 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 your lease is coming up. Okay. And you know that in two months and a month and a half, you're going to have to turn on your car. Um, and you start thinking about what you're going to get next. Right. And out of the sudden, you're like, you know what? I really like that Jeep. And uh, you never saw Jeeps before because you had, sedans and all of a sudden you feel like you're going to be more adventurous or you're going to go and do more outdoor sports you're going to start surfing or whatever it is and you start looking at jeeps 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 and all of a sudden once you put that in your brain and the reticular activating system is aware of it 
now you're going to be paying attention to more of that. You, out of the sudden, you're going to see Jeeps everywhere, right? Out of the sudden, you're going to turn on the TV. It's going to be a commercial about a Jeep. Uh, you're going to go on Instagram and someone's going to put a post with their Jeep. And that's basically what your brain is doing. Your brain is choosing where to put the attention to. And that's why all these exercises and all these things that you're saying, and when you say little things like when or if, as opposed to when, uh, or I will do that instead of like, maybe I do that. All those things are going back to your subconscious mind and your brain is taking all that information, whether you know it or not. So why not to focus into what you want? Focus on the thoughts you want to put in your brain. Just start thinking the things that are going to get you to where you want to be. Just start thinking about the car or this or the, or the relationship or like, you know, what kind of relationship you want? How do you see yourself with someone? What the kind of emotions are going to activate, you know? Everything that you want, if you start like really putting in your brain and thinking and talking about it and writing about it and reading it out loud and everything is going to get your brain to start activating that. And therefore, it's going to start coming up with all those you know, uh, ideas, opportunities, situations, people, everything that just basically matches that vibration. Because it's all about vibration and the energy, right? So you're going to start getting in alignment with everything that you want. And eventually that's going to get you that Jeep. That's going to get you that relationship, okay? So let me see what else we have in here. You know, I, I made a note over here and uh, I believe that your destiny, your life gets shaped by the decisions you make. Sometimes we make good decisions, sometimes we make bad decisions and everything has a result. You know, sometimes you make a great decision is going to get you to be closer to where you want to be. But sometimes you make a bad decision, you know, and you make a mistake. So it's important to really, before you make an important decision, to think about what the consequences are going to be and why you, you know, you need to really make more good decisions. than bad. It's okay to make some bad decisions. Everybody makes mistakes. I've done it myself. But you have to take more good decisions than bad decisions and your life have more chances to be better than worst. Uh, you know, and a lot of people sometimes of me, including all of us, uh, make the mistake to get hung up in what has happened to us and what we've been gone, what we've gone through, and where we were born, and uh, how our environment was at the time, or what our teachers at school told us about ourselves, or what we could do or what we couldn't do. Uh, all all these things, you know, uh, of what happened to you when I was when I was a kid. Uh, uh, someone told me this, so I was molested, or I was. Uh, abuse or was bullied, whatever is that happened in your life, all those things, uh, you can change that. You cannot go back in time. And uh, I'm sorry for, for the ones that have gone through rough times. Uh, you know, you didn't deserve that. Uh, you didn't choose that. But like Tony Robbins says, life happens for you, not to you. And the moment you understand that life happens for you, and the moment you understand why Oprah Winfrey went through what he had to went through, right? She... I mean, if you guys just read about her story, I mean, it's incredible, right? What happened to her uh, when she had a baby, they took the baby out of her, uh, the suffering, the, the, the poverty, everything that she had to go through, but everything she went through made her Oprah Winfrey, right? Uh, and you can just go and start analyzing the story of a lot of successful people. People had hard times. People had bad situations. People had a rough time in life, but all that happened for them to develop and becoming a, 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 something better. You know, um, you need to find the ability to learn from those experiences and go forward and be better. Don't get hung up and that happened to me. And because that happened to me, I couldn't go to the college I wanted. And because I didn't go to the college I wanted, and now I don't, I'm not where I need to be. No, that's called so what? That calls let's clear that and let's start from right now building up in where you want to be how you want to be, how you want to feel. So let's start focusing on that, right? Um, let's start making those great decisions. Let's start making those nice, good decisions so they're going to shape our destiny. Um, in life, we don't get what we ask for. Yes, 
there is the book and I talk to you about this and, and, and I believe in this. Ask and is given, right? It's in the Bible. Uh, it was in the book, The Secret or the movie, The Secret. Uh, ask and it shall be given. Yes, you need to ask, right? To, you want something, you need to ask. So, but you don't get in life what you ask for only. There's a little thing that gets sometimes left off. You get in life what you ask for and what you work hard for also and then you receive it right so you ask for something and you work hard that's your job asking and working hard how is going to happen when it's going to happen is out of your control so just focus on knowing what you want ask with faith that you know it's going to happen and then go and just put the work put your head down forget about the environment do what you do whatever your craft is and that eventually is going to take you to where you want to be so that's what we have control over it only. Uh, just to wrap it up a little bit and open it up to questions. Why are we doing all this? Why are you even sitting in here listening to this crazy Bolivian guy? Uh, what is it that I'm even bothering on, on coming here and talking to you? Uh, what is it? Why, why, why is all this? Why, why are all these books and this and that, the self improvement the positive and this and that well I'll tell you why nothing happens around you the most important thing and when we talk about like how to navigate through the storm in these times by being positive the, the, the premise is let's focus on the things we have control of it everything that we have control in here in our head right uh, when when there is no enemy within you know, we all have demons, we all have problems, we all have our own issues, our own hangups and everything. But when you learn to kill that enemy within, right, uh, the enemy outside can do no harm to you. Whatever people say or what's out there, or what's happening out there or whatever, if you're in peace with yourself, if you have conquered that enemy inside your mind, the doubts, the fear, the buts, the hangups, the stories that you make, the excuses that we make, if you learn how to kill that enemy inside you and your mind, there is nothing out there. There's no enemy is going to be able to fight you because it's irrelevant. What's out there, it doesn't matter. What other people say about you, other people's opinion about you, what they feel, what they think about you, it doesn't really matter. What they, they believe what you can achieve or not is irrelevant because they're not you. They don't know what you're capable of. They don't know what you're made of. So whatever people are saying out there, you know, always just quiet, you know, like they, there's a saying, they say the wolf doesn't care about the sheep opinion, right? So this is kind of like the main thing I want to talk to you about today. Mindset, know what you want, you know, pay attention in here, in your heart, in your brain, and who you are, what you want, have it clear, work hard for it. Keep going back on your books, keep going back on listening, keep going back on writing, keep going to your journals, keep track, meditate, visualize, do all the things that we're discussing here, do it over and over again. And sometimes it's like, oh my God, I've been doing this for two months and I've not seen any, any great results yet. Just hang on. Don't let that go away. Just hang on. Trust me, it's going to work out. The day works out, you're going to wake up one day and be like, wow. And that's when the creative process starts. And that's when you realize that this works because it does. It's like gravity. I don't care if you're a good person, a bad person. You go to the 20th floor of a building and you jump, you're going to die. doesn't matter because well, there's a law called gravity. Same as with this. Same as with the law of attraction. Same as with the vibration and the energy. Just do it and just trust me on this one. I promise you. And when you do feel that it's something happened when you please, please give me feedback. It will make me feel a lot better if I get feedback in any way, email, text, uh, Insta story message, uh, YouTube, go, you know, go into my YouTube channel. I, I think I have a, quite a few episodes in there now. So, and I see people making nice comments in there. So I really appreciate that because it makes me feel like, you know, someone is appreciating this. So just make sure to go to Santiago Arana official in YouTube write me something let me know that it's working it will make me so happy to hear that you guys are applying this and, and it's working out for you and i'm being able to bring some value into your life it will make me super super happy all right having said that i would like to uh open it up to some questions i'm going to start with zoom today uh let me go here for the q a well there's no questions on zoom i guess let's go to instagram
Okay. Hey, Monique, how are you? <laughs> hey, everybody, such a nice people. Okay. We're fired up, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of comments. Everything's energy, and energy is everything. I agree. Law of attraction, yes. Oh, what was the term? Reticular, yes. Reticular activating system google it and explain to you what that means what is that part of your brain that gets better all i see is jeeps <laughs> i love it uh sammy parker can we hire you for a mentor i would love to thank you so much that's so flattering one of the reasons what i'm doing this on tv is uh because i do not have the time unfortunately to mentor i have a few people that i mentor and uh uh and uh i feel sometimes that i'm not even giving the time that they deserve and i feel bad so you know i'm i'm, I'm working on number one possibly doing a podcast i'm working on starting to have a little bit more few seminars where i can like hopefully touch more people as opposed to just in a one by one but that's very very flattering thank you so much um a failure no attempt i like this one we should track failures as well absolutely and the way we make sure we don't think yes all right i don't have a lot of questions today i like i like this crowd they're all soaking up all the information uh let's see here make sure i don't miss anyone okay there's one here do your uh, do you do your meditation and visualization practice at the same time? And what do you do to remain present during the day? Gibson Live One. That's a great question. Uh, I try different things. Uh, I try to start by meditating. What's why why I personally do meditation is because I'm trying to quiet my mind. You know, the mind and the brain is thinking so many thoughts per second that uh, sometimes you, you, know, you need to meditate to just quiet that. You won't be able to listen or to pay attention to the message or to who you want to be or what you want until you quiet. You need to separate yourself from the external, from the world, in order to be able to be focused. So I usually start by meditating to quiet my brain. I do breathing exercises. I talk to you about Wim Hof exercises that he has that are amazing. Uh, uh, I start by meditating to quiet my brain. So I feel like I'm just bombarded with tons of ideas and I'm just exhausted. I go into a meditation, breathing exercises. And once I quiet and I find a peaceful way, if I have the time where I feel like it, then I jump right into a, into a visualization. And then now, now I'm first, I quiet all the thoughts, right? Because it's a bunch of thoughts that I really want to think about, but I, you know what? Riots, this, that, it gets stuff in your head. And now, okay, let's go and quiet that put them aside. Now that I'm in a quiet place, oh, now let me pick what I want to think about. Let me pick what I want to feel, where I want to be. So how's, that's how can I, I use it. So almost every time that I visualize, I start by meditating, by quieting my brain first. Um, hope that answers your question. Oh, thank you, Monique. You had a tremendous life of my life. Question. Uh, one love says, do you listen to your inner wisdom? Yes, absolutely. And that's the whole point of meditating. You know, you do have that inner wisdom and uh, you will be able to hear better if you quiet the voices from outside. Uh, Real Tortina, how long did it take you until you started seeing results in your business? All right. That's a more specific question. Um, in my business, personally, uh, I started a business in, in 2004, in the beginning of 2004. And for the first year, I didn't sell anything. And I actually had a horrendous attitude. I would go door knocking, not only to mention that I was door knocking in the wrong neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, I wasn't doing the things in the way I should be doing, you know. And, they, and that's when I got introduced by a mentor of mine, Rodrigo Iglesias. Uh, who told me, you know, I, I searched for him and I finally, after four months of trying to get a hold of him, I finally got a hold of him and he sat down with me and he said, what's going on? How can I help you? I don't need an assistant. I have too many assistants. Like, look, I don't want assistance. I just need advice. 
please just give me advice. That's all I need. I don't need anything from you. I don't need money. I don't need a job, anything. Just give me advice because I know, and I specifically look for this mentor because it, in my mind, and, and this is how it really works. You know, I was frustrated. It was a year and a half that I didn't sell anyone. I was like, oh, I'm going to sell properties. So I don't know anyone. I don't have relatives. I don't have friends. I'm working in the restaurant, double shift every day. I don't even have time to do anything. And then I said, you know what? One day I sat down and not knowingly I started meditating. And I said, it's gotta be someone out there that's gone through what I've gone through. It's gotta be someone that came from another country, didn't speak the language, and started from scratch and has made it happen. LA is a huge city, it's a lot of people, it's got to be someone. I stumbled upon this guy, and I finally got an appointment with him. And when I was talking to him, he's like, okay, so then tell me, how can I help you? And I was like, I'm door knocking, I'm doing this, I'm talking to people, I'm doing that, but I work in the restaurant and I don't have time, and I da 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 da. He got up and left. I was like, oh, shit, I pissed off the guy. So he left and he came right back and he gave me a book. And the book was The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Wallace. And just to keep it short, because we're going to be running out of time and I love to answer more questions, is what is The Science of Getting Rich talk about? Yes, it sounds like it's only monetary, right? But it's not about that. If you read that book, it's an incredible book. That one and Think and Grow Rich are books that really changed my life. And what it essentially says and the essential message in between all that knowledge is, it's not what you do, it's how you do it, sorry. No, how you, it's how you do it. It's that attitude, you know? Attitude is everything. It's, uh, it's that, you know, you need to, when you do something, okay? Example, for me as a real estate agent, and how I started to apply it, I started to apply it and I started to see results. So I'm, I'm still on your, on, your, on your question, by the way. I just took a little loop, but I'm gonna get back to it. I started to apply in a sense where, okay, it's not, how you do is how you do it. So I'm gonna to go to my open house, but I'm gonna stop and pick up some flowers. I'm gonna pick up a candle, and, I'm, and if the house doesn't have a sound system because you know, not every house had a sound system back in 2003, 2004, I'll bring a little speaker or something, and I'm gonna create the Amazon, like just from the moment I was putting the signs, I was doing it excited, knowing and saying, oh, this is the sign that someone is gonna read and is gonna hire me go to the open house, open the house, put some flowers, put a candle, put a little music, and then having that energy and that attitude, starting to attract people to come to open houses. And everybody that knows me know that I build my business over open houses because I created this incredible energy around me in these open houses that people will walk in and feel it. And they start talking to me and they like me. They will, no resistance, give me, they will offer me to give me their number. They will say, come, I wanna show you my house. I'm thinking about selling or, Hey, I've been working with someone, but I'm not really happy. Would you be interested on showing us around? That kind of stuff happens to me all the time. All it still is happening until right now. Uh, but it's because of that. It's, it's having the right attitude, you know, it's having the right mindset, having that energy. People pick up on that. We all, whether you know or know it, when you're attracted to someone or you want to talk to someone or you feel drawn to someone, it's that energy that that person exudes. So if you can set and put yourself in an amazing vibration, then guess what? People aren't just going to be drawn to want to talk to you and do business with you. So when I met him in 2000, and I think towards the end of 2005 or even 2006, uh, he gave me the book and he said, read this book and then call me. And then I read the book and I was like, I remember looking at some pages and I'm and, and tearing up and being like, oh my God, you know, this is unbelievable. You know, so I called him back and I said, thank you so much. This book is incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's like, okay, you read it? He's like, yes. And now it's coming from a place of gratitude, right? Which is the first thing that you do to change around your energy. So he saw that I was grateful and he's like, guess what? I want to invite you to lunch. So he invites me to lunch to Gaucho Grill. I remember we had a great lunch and he says, do this, do that. Try that, try this, try the neighbor, different neighborhood, try different approach. And I started applying little things like that. But with the right, I was like, now I was door knocking and I was like, oh, I was like, yes, this door it is. Or this is the door where I meet someone cool. And all of a sudden I get a listing or I get a call for a listing. I call him and I'm like, look, I got a call for a huge listing. It's 1.3 million or 1.7 million. Would you mind coming with me and help me get it? And we split it and he was like, yes. So we went and got it. Long story short, I started calling him in a lot of things and we, you know, and he realized that I was applying it and things are starting working out. And that was about 2007. So for me, and again, my, my specific situation doesn't apply to everybody. Everybody has, everybody's different. You know? Everybody has different circumstances. For me, it took about two, two years, two and a half years to see things switch around uh, from the 
you know, practicing the, the meditation and all these concepts that we're discussing over here. And it took about four and a half to five years to really start making some decent money. So patient, patience, patience, okay? So that's with that. Uh, K Brooks 29 says, I'll start giving you feedback right now. For the past three weeks, I've not checked my phone first thing in the morning, have worked out every day in the morning, and jump in a cold shower twice. Oh my God, Kay Brooks, I'm so proud of you. That's incredible. That's awesome. Uh, you know, that's the kind of message that just fills me up with happiness. That's incredible. You know, I'm so proud of you doing that, to taking action and doing that. I'm, I bet you feel incredible. I bet that, you know, things are, 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 are I think, I bet the change, things have changed in a positive way for you. And, you know, now that you know it, now that you don't drop it, you know, don't drop it, continue, stick to it and do it. Make this your new lifestyle forever. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, Zoom because I see now that I have some questions on Zoom. Ann Metzger says, have listening to anything I can find on YouTube on Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's incredible. Thanks for sharing him with us. He has shifted now. I think about my life. Okay. Fantastic. There you go. You went in there, found one of the many people that the people that I, I suggested. Joe Dispenza is an incredible, incredible man. He is the way how he understands how, you know, he, he, he understands the whole way how the brain works. I mean, this is a guy that almost died in a bicycle accident, destroyed his spine and, and they told him he was never able to walk again. And he, with his mind, basically practiced surgery on himself energetically and walk out of the hospital. And now he's who he is. And he's sharing all this for us to become better, you know? So great. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, Michelle, Toreda, I think you touch upon when you're around other people, you aren't so positive. Maybe complain a lot or talk about other people. I usually spend less time around them. But do you think it would be advantageous to address it with them in a situation as it would perhaps help them or do you just try to spend less time also? I try to surround myself with positive people as much as I can, but it's impossible all the time. Yeah, of course, I mean, look, no everybody is gonna be in the same vibration, no everybody's gonna be on the same thing. And yes, if you have the choice and you have the ability to surround yourself, you know, because we are the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And also, Tony Robbins says, uh, proximity is power right being close to people that's successful that you admire is going to give you the power to learn and and emulate that uh when it comes to like trying to teach or try to tell people not to be like that sometimes you can fire back uh you know i find myself that sometimes i try to talk to people and try to tell them that and if they're not ready to receive the message you just maybe try and if you feel that it's resistance just don't push it that means that no everybody's ready yet and they will be ready at some point. But if you want to help someone, just try maybe start talking to. And if that person doesn't really respond in a way, don't push it because that's going to get you in a bad place. So just kind of, it's okay that they're not ready yet. Go around it and you continue your path. And yes, for sure, make an effort to surround yourself with people that are in the more alignment with being positive and the things you, that you want. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Let me go back a few more questions here on Instagram. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> Please write a book or a podcast. Yes, thank you, Laila. Uh, I love it. When they ask me this question, Daniel at Dreamax, what's your goal this year? My goal this year is to sell 500 million in, in sales and volume. Uh, uh, Marco Barnett, are you planning on a meditation session anytime soon? You know, to be honest, uh, I I have not thought about it. Uh, I let me. I'm gonna think about it because someone asked me for a visualization session and someone asked me for a meditation session. But the reality is that. The idea of doing an online meditation kind of makes me think that kind of defeats the purpose because the idea is to kind of 
not think about anything. And if you are trying to meditate, knowing that you're doing it online, that people are watching, all the people are involved, we kind of, I mean, for me that I'm ADD, I think we just kind of not let me go in the place I want to be. Um, so let me, let me think about that. I'll, I'll get back to you guys on that one. But uh, I feel that when you want to meditate, it's best if you are alone in a quiet place uh, where you're really, really quiet. And the whole thing with the breathing exercises is just to keep your focus on your breathing so then you don't have time to think about the other things. Uh, so if you are in, in an environment with other people are doing it, I feel like sometimes you're going to get out. It's going to be, it's going to be tricky, but uh, let me think about it. Let me see if other people do it and how they do it. I'll try to learn from it. Uh, Cesar seven, how you make your transition from your former job to real estate when you had your obligation bills, current job, and when you're working for a new real estate career, how did this, uh, yeah, well, I didn't miss work. Uh, what I did is I organized myself better. And, and that's when I, I introduced to Outlook calendar. And I started basically scheduling everything. So I would go wake up early in the morning, learn as much as, as real estate as I could, go on, go on basically uh, at the MLS and look at every property I could look and learn and look at the areas. Uh, I remember my title guy would print these maps to show the areas and the APM numbers. And then I got ready for, for the lunchtime shift. I would go at 11 o'clock until 3 o'clock, get out at 3 o'clock, go back to my house, rest for a little bit. Uh, if I had, at that point, some clients, make a few phone calls or do a showing and then get ready and go back to work. And I was working double shift in the restaurants every day. I would have one day off a, a week, which was Mondays, I think. But then every day, especially weekends, I was super busy. Eventually, then I dropped it to just night shifts. So in the day, I was just doing real estate. And you just got to make the transition. You got to accommodate to what your reality is. And you just need to work around it and things get better, okay? Um, uplifting days. You can guide the meditation maybe... This is what is suggested. Yeah, I mean, perhaps, again, that's why I want to get back to you. I haven't thought about it. I never done it. I, I don't know how to, how to guide you, and I don't want to uh, do something that I... Uh, let, me, let me look into it, but yes, perhaps it's, it's a good guided meditation, you know? I mean, I know there are guided meditations, and I'll, I'll try to do my best, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to put something together. How about that? Uh, What are some tools that you use to reset your mindset? We talk about this. This is one of kind of my favorite topics, actually. And I'm going to go with this. And then one more question from, uh, from Instagram, and then we're going to wrap it up. But uh, to reset your mindset, as I talked in the beginning, is you most likely going to need to involve your physiology. Okay? What does that mean? Uh, if you are in a mindset that is not helping you, or you're kind of down, or you got a bad call, or or something happened, you need to snap out of that. And the best way to snap out of it is you need to get every cell in your body to switch and change the energy because you are in a vibration that is not working out. So now you need to get into a variation that's going to switch things around and shake everything up. So what do I do? Jump in the cold ocean, exercise, go on a run. Sometimes I need to take my mind out of what's happening. I well, now, no, it's not possible. But when it was, go to the movie theater and just completely get into a movie that is far from reality, like a sci-fi movie. And then just what, what it does basically to me, and again, I'm not saying this is a solution, but to me, I'm sharing what works for me. It's like it basically makes me forget about what I'm dealing with my current reality and just gets me into this place for two hours of a movie. And I go in there and that gives my brain and myself a break. So when I get out of it, that I'm fresh and I go and I take on that problem or those situations with a different, a little bit different perspective. And if anything, rested and, and a little bit more relaxed. Uh, but I mean, exercise and getting in situations where jumping in a cold freezing shower or ocean is going to get you shake out of that bad mindset. And I'm telling you, it's going to release the endorphins and, and all those great juices that we know we have inside that is going to get you in a much better mood, happy, in a much better place. So that's that's what I recommend. Uh, we have 58 seconds, so one more question. 
What about upcoming seminars in LA or plans to do some to San Diego once you go back? Yes, for sure. I'll keep you posted. I'm working on a couple of them here in LA. Uh, haven't thought about San Diego yet, but thanks for suggesting that. I would love to do that. I'd love to be, see, see people in there. Uh, thanks again for joining today. This was so much fun. I mean, so much fun when you realize that one hour is gone by and I'm like, oh my God, what happened here? I only have 29 seconds. But thanks for joining. Have an incredible, incredible week. Uh, enjoy your life. Uh, life is a gift. Uh, appreciate you coming and joining, asking questions and engaging. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you next week at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, okay? If you missed this one, go to my YouTube channel, at Santiago Arana Official. Make comments, ask questions. I can still answer questions in there. Thanks again. I'll see you soon, guys.